I was really stunned by the other half of Reconstruction, which we never paid any attention to, which was the money debate. There was a huge debate about money during the same time. These were the two great issues. What do we do about the ex-slaves, and what do we do with the money? Because the North used greenbacks to finance the Civil War. They didn't want to tax people, so they just printed money and made it legal tender. It's $240 million in greenbacks, which are purely paper money. They have no value other than what people are willing to believe is in them. And they're very successful during the war. They don't cause a lot of inflation, and they allow Lincoln to prosecute the war without having to raise taxes and to keep the sort of massive dissent under control. But after the war, what do you do with them? Well, it's an interesting question. Do you, one argument is you just get rid of the greenbacks. They're, they're not real money. They don't have any real value. They're a lie. They're a fraud and a cheat. Burn them, some people would say. Contract them, and they call it contracting the currency. Bring them back in, burn them, destroy them, and go back to real money, which at the time was supposed to be gold. And the other argument is that we need more paper money. Money is just a social convenience. It's whatever we say it is, and we should get rid of gold. The document comes out of that debate. It comes out of this debate about the nature of money. And as I started to look at it, I got really fascinated by that question. I mean, why not use paper money? What's the argument for gold? And when I started to read the arguments for gold, they became really fascinating and absurd. I mean, they're superficially rational. Economists in the 19th century will go through this long rational explanation about prices and supply and demand, and then you'll finally get to the core of the metaphor, which is gold just is valuable because it is. And that's always there. It just is. And sometimes they'll say, God made it to be money. And they say this, I've seen this again and again, God made gold to be money. Okay, this is the money, this is going to be burned for heat. I mean, it's really, um, it's that clear. And there's this, what you would have to call a fetish about gold, that it has this magical value that's independent of what people think. It just has this magical value. I got really interested in that question. So this Nast cartoon was produced as part of the attack on paper money. Nast was a really strong, hard money guy, and he referred to paper money as the rag baby. That was his name for it, because paper money was often referred to as rag money. It was made of rags and old rags, rags and trash, inflated paper trash, I'd say. This is part of an argument against paper money, and it's, it's a really good expression of the gold standard position. It's a really strong expression of the gold standard position, and because Nast is good, it's pretty coherent.